Um, yeah, obviously, you know, really, really pleased with the win. Um, but our guys, you know, certainly were uh, into the game, and uh, the start to the game certainly was key for us. You know, we've had you know some lackluster starts recently, and and uh, that was not the case today. It certainly, was a goal of ours, you know, to play well early and uh, and really try to impose our will on the game, uh, while realizing that it's a 40 minute 40 40 minute game. Um, but uh, you know, we we were getting some stops early. Uh, shooting the ball pretty well, getting some getting some baskets, and uh, you know we're able to develop a lead over the course of you know the first half. Um, and uh, you know going into halftime, you know our guys were uh, energetic; uh, they felt good about where they were at. But at the same time, we reminded them, you know, there were some some plays out there. You know, Rhode Island runs really good offense, and and uh, you know, they had quite a few open looks. You know, that just didn't go down for them. And, uh, and certainly, you know, that, that can't be the standard for us, uh, just, somebody, just hoping that somebody misses. We, we've got to make, make people miss, you know, a little bit better. Uh, the turnovers were a problem, you know, in the first half. And uh, I think the guys did a much better job, you know, shy, uh, the, the, the one that Max had, um, not realizing that the guy was behind him. Uh, in the second half, we only had two. Um, you know, we shot the ball better from two today, you know, than we have in, in games past. Certainly that's going to be, be a key for us going, going forward. Uh, but all in all, you know, really pleased with, with the win. And uh, we have a ton of respect for, you know, Rhode Island, Coach Miller, and, and, and what they're doing. They're obviously playing still without one of their starters. You know, second game he hasn't played. And, uh, you know, big, big uh, loss for him. He's going to be a good player. I think Coach, there was a point in the second half Team, yeah. Little grind, you called the what was the message you wanted your guys Yeah, to that was that was you know real simple. It wasn't just that one play, although that one irritated me because you know the defense actually was pretty solid there. We just did we weren't disciplined with the block out, and uh, you know it just it, it's hard. You know when you have that type of a lead, you have young people out there that are in and out. It, there's just a natural uh, relaxation that could happen at times, and and some of it's. You know, they were they were making plays. You know, they were playing freed up, and they were letting it go. And they were put, the coach was putting them in some good positions to get off some shots uh, that were pretty clean. And uh, you know, we've got to do a better job of staying with it. You know, to our playing to our standard and being more fierce. You know, on that defensive side of the ball. And uh, there were times out there that we were not as fierce as we needed to be, uh, but. You know, all in all, certainly pleased with our ability to get it going again. And you know, the offense certainly had something to do with that tonight. Um, but you know, second half defense was not not where it needed to be. The roles seem really solidified at this point. Is this the closest to, to your vision offensively that you guys have been this year? I mean, I don't I don't know about that. I mean, I, I think it's just. You know, I think the guys do understand what, what they're supposed to do when they get out there, uh, when they're with their minutes, right? Uh, I think each guy understands that, you know, they have some ability and, and one may be different than another. And, you know, playing the matchups at times is certainly something that we try to do. Um, and, and uh, you know, I do think the guys understand, you know, uh, how important each one of them are to the overall team. And, um, you know, they want to share the ball. You know, I didn't really look at the assists tonight, but it's 15, you know, 15 assists, pretty, pretty solid. Uh, there's still some, some passes out there. We passed up some shots, you know, certainly in the first half and ended up with a harder one. You know, we've got we've to make sure we're ready to shoot when we catch. But, um, you know, I do, I do think our guys understand uh, what they need to do individually for our team to be successful. It feels, uh, like, it feels like this is one of the, your first games in a while that you put it together both offensively and defensively. What, is it, what does that say about your complete game coming together when it matters? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we've got to continue to, you know, execute a little bit better. Um, you know, I think you saw some execution out there, uh, certainly in the last two games where the guys were in the right spots and, you know, uh, someone gets a clean look. You know, certainly you want that, um, and you need that. But then you also are going to need players making plays. 
you know, at key times as well, because the defense is going to take it away sometimes. And I think you saw some of that, you know, as well. Um, but, you know, defensively, you know, every game is critical right now, you know, for every team, you know, in our conference. And uh, certainly, you know, the top six or seven, um, and it may extend past that, I haven't, you know, totally looked at it, but, you know, every game heading into Brooklyn is critical. And so we're all jockeying and fighting for spots. And, um, you know, the defense is something that, you know, has got to be there, you know, regardless of who we're playing or what court we're playing on and, and all that. And then the execution, it comes down to that at the end. You know, these tight games, you've got to be able to execute and, uh, you know, find key baskets, find key stops, make other teams miss, finish with a rebound. You know, in order to get victories. I mean, that's just what it comes down to in these tight games. How important is that double by extra day of rest in Brooklyn for this team? I have no idea. I have no idea. We all want it, right? You know, but I mean, I, you know, you've seen teams go from, you know, the Big East and some of these other conferences where they just rattle right through. They play that first game and then they're, they've already got a game under their belt and then they're playing <laughs> the second one. And, you know, the other teams kind of just get started. You know, we had it in the Mountain West out there. And, you know, we've seen some teams, you know, go through. Um, but as you get deeper into it, it gets harder because you get more uh, fatigued. Um, but that second game, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, you know. Do you see Zeb's leadership shining right now from a communication standpoint, from an intensity standpoint? It yeah, seems like he's Zeb, all over the place. Yeah, he's tried to step up, you know, in a lot of ways. And um, you know, I've been really pleased with him all year, um, you know, in terms of his – willingness to speak up and talk to others and, and um, you know, try to get the team enthused and energetic, you know, at times. And when we're not doing well, pick them up. And I think the, the cool thing about our team is it's not one guy. You know, we've got multiple guys in timeouts, you know, that communicate and, uh, at a high level. And um, most of them are the older guys, you know, and that's okay. You know, the, the younger guys are watching that, you know, and they're seeing it and they're witnessing it. And so that's how you build overall the culture of the program and um and zeb's you know it's his time right now to you know to do that that's had that late three and been open in like 10 minutes what do you see from some of those bench guys tonight yeah i mean they got in there and did well you know i mean i think you know bell obviously played in the first half fast didn't get a chance in the first uh, nor did rose but you know it's hard when you've been sitting there the whole time you know to go in there and all of a sudden make a play uh, but, you know, Fats is known for that. He's, he's not afraid, you know, to do it, and uh, certainly Rose as well. Um, you know, Bell, was cool for him. His, his uh, mom and his sister were here tonight, and, and so that was cool for them to see him play for the first time. But, um, you know, really, really proud of those guys because it's not easy, you know, it's not easy not playing the minutes that you want to play, but, you know, they, they haven't been distracted by it. Fats was working out, you know, earlier before the game. Uh, with Coach Crawford right after shoot around, you know, and putting some extra work in. So, you know, he gets it. You know, he understands where he's at right now, but it doesn't mean, you know, that we're not going to need him, you know, in a given situation. He's got to be ready, you know, if his number's called. You've seen all of Max's 1,000 points through here in Utah State. Talk about the special aspect of that milestone. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's exciting, you know, for him and, and for us, you know, watching him grow. Over the course of his career, you know, he, uh, you know, he was, he was, uh, he left a lot to be desired when we first got there. I'll be honest with you. I mean, he was kind of crazy the way he played, and and uh, I was on him all the time. And um, to his credit, you know, he stuck with it. He kept listening, you know, to our staff and his teammates, and hung in there, and uh, kept working. And then all of a sudden, end of that first year, began to play and. You know, was you know he's still a substitute. Uh, it's kind of what Fats is going through right now, right? And he was still in that same category, and uh, he figured it out. And going into that next year, beat out a guy who started over, you know, the year before. Uh, he's just that talented and that, that type of player. So he's been great, you know, uh, you know, for us to coach, and certainly he's been great for VCU, you know, this year. You know, we're pleased that he's here. I'll see you know ahead on Saturday yep. with, uh, with Richmond. I want to get your thoughts about balancing, getting them some more work in the next couple of days before Saturday, but also getting them some rest because this will be your fourth game in 10 days. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's critical for us to recover, 
right? And we've got a pretty good routine. We, we know how we do it. And it um, doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, perfect. Uh, but, you know, it's a little bit harder when you're playing a first team, you know, a team for the first time, uh, as opposed to the second time through. You have, there's some, some familiarity, right? It doesn't mean there won't be adjustments. Obviously, the adjustments will come. And you have to prepare, you know, in theory for those. But at the same time, uh, you, the players kind of know the players a little bit. And it doesn't mean the way, exactly the way that they played in that particular game is going to be the way that they're going to play in the next game. Not saying that at all. Um, but, um, you know, we, we've got to make sure that our guys, you know, at this time of year, they have fresh minds, fresh legs, and, uh, and they're ready to attack, you know, on game day and ready to put their best effort in on game day. And there's only been so many things you can change this time of year. Uh, you can add some cute little plays and you can do some things to try to steal some baskets, uh, but ultimately you kind of are who you are, you know, from a defensive perspective and, and, and uh, you know, overall offensively. Um, and so, you know, you gotta, you gotta figure out, you know, how are, how are our guys gonna have the best chance to win? And that certainly is making sure that they're rested and making sure that they're, they have great clarity uh, in, in terms of the game plan. And, and so they can attack it, you know, when that ball's tipped. Did you say anything to Max? Have, have a chance to yet about the milestone? We all said something in the timeout, and everybody kind of heard it. And so, yeah, it's, it's uh, pretty special. Uh, he got to pick his music. He picked the Bee Gees in there after the game. First time ever in, in the history of coaching, the Bee Gees have been played uh, in the locker room after the game. But, you know, an amazing song, More Than a Woman. I don't I don't have any idea, but they all have a song. You know, they all have a song that's picked, that they've picked, and then the GAs play it. You know, whoever the player of the game is, they get to play it. So that all of a sudden popped on. <laughs> so that was his, I guess. I have no idea. I have no idea. But there's YouTube. There's you know, there's a lot of stuff out there nowadays. So. Anything else? Anything else for Coach Guys? All right, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, take care. Thank you.